So let's talk about powder flow properties. This instrument, the PFT or powder flowability tester, developed here at the Wolfson Centre and used now worldwide, uh, manufactured by Brookfield Engineering. This measures the ability of a powder to flow or not flow in a process. And one of the things about powders is when you have a powder that is fine or that has a high surface energy or that is moist, it de demonstrates what we call cohesion, which is the ability to stick together. Let me just demonstrate this. We're all familiar with making a snowball. This isn't snow, well, it may look like it, it's the same sort of colour. This is actually a pharmaceutical powder and you can see it's in a loose condition here. If I pick this up in my hand, like many powders, and I squeeze it, when I open my hand it maintains a structure, a strength here. And this makes the powder hard to handle. So what we measure in terms of powder flow properties is the relationship between how hard I've squeezed the powder and the strength of the resulting agglomerate. And the relationship between those two is what we call the flow function. So the way in which this instrument works is we place a powder sample in the test cell here. When we're measuring powder flow function we use this veined lid which you see here. So this, the veins in this grip the powder so that when we press this down onto the powder and shear it, we know we're shearing within the powder. So this fits on the machine here and you see comes down on top of the powder in order to consolidate the powder and then the trough rotates in order to do the shearing. So that's the fundamental principle of measuring the flow function. Also with the same instrument we make other measurements as well and one very important one which we make using a smooth surface here is the wall friction. The interaction of a powder with a constraining wall whether it be in a hopper, a silo, a process vessel, a screw conveyor, uh, the transfer points of a belt conveyor or so on. This is a very critical measurement that we need to make in order to predict the behaviour of the powder and to undertake design of equipment. So this fits on the machine in exactly the same way in place of the veined lid which I showed you earlier on. And with this you can see in this graph we have the measurement of what we call the wall yield locus or wall friction curve. Also, again using the same uh, machine we produce what we call the bulk density function. This is how the bulk density of the material varies with stress as shown in this graph here. And in addition what we call the internal friction function as well. Together those four measurements completely characterise the resistance to flow of a powder such that we can then undertake design of equipment for handling that powder or indeed we can predict how perhaps a new powder will behave within an existing process. So this is a, a really important part of our work and we also have a similar type of machines with other scales as well, with larger troughs where we have to measure larger particles. We place a powder sample. This is placed on the machine. With this placed, we start a test under computer control which compacts the powder, shears it in order to consolidate it at a controlled stress and then we change to a different stress and we shear again to measure the strength of the powder. Under automatic control this runs about 40 different tests at different values of consolidation stress and test stress. The data comes up on a graph over here which shows the effect of the stress, the measured strength of the material versus the 
test stress that we use for a range of different consolidating stresses. And on here, what we see is what are known as the yield loci for the powder, for different consolidation stresses. They're fitted with Moore's circles, as shown, and then from that analysis, we calculate what is known as the flow function of the powder. And the flow function is the unique fingerprint of the powder that relates its strength to the stress that has been applied to it. So by using this instrument and making that measurement of powder flow function, we can then determine how large an outlet is required on a hopper or a feeder or a silo to get reliable flow with this material. Um, or, alternatively, we can use this the other way. We use this very frequently, and many of the users worldwide use it in this way, for powder formulation optimization. In other words, adjusting the formulation of their powders and the manufacturing of their powders to generate, as it were, user-friendly handling properties. And that's one of the most popular uses of this. But it's also widely used for quality control as well, checking from batch to batch with powders that powders have consistent flow properties. And those consistent flow properties often mean then that the, the powder has consistent processing properties in its use. So it's used for, for example, measurement of the coffee grounds that go into the pods that go into, uh, into coffee makers because a consistent flowability here indicates a consistent particle property which means that then when you make the coffee using the pod, you get a consistent flavour from the coffee. Also used for many other industries as well, in pharmaceuticals, in, in aggregates, in quarrying, mining and so on as well.